Hey, I'm Steve and this is Wilmer Woodworks. This week we have an unboxing of the Creality Falcon 2 12 watt laser engraver and cutter. I hope you enjoy the video of this uh, unboxing and assembly and test run of the first engraving and cutting. My hope is with this laser engraver I'll be able to customize and personalize a lot of my wood projects moving forward. So I ordered the 12 watt Creality Falcon 2. It was really a toss up for me between the 12 watt and the 10 watt Pro. So I asked uh, in some of the online message boards what people would recommend, what are the pros and cons, because honestly I couldn't find much literature about the two different units. It came down to, I went with this unit because I could actually upgrade the laser to a 20 watt or 40 watt down the road. It's on the same platform as those units. Whereas the 10 watt was the older uh, unit. So you'll see when I'm unboxing this, they did use a lot of foam, a lot of packing material. It actually, it was very well packed. But this frame is already put together. So there's nothing that needs to be assembled. Whereas the uh, 5 watt and the 10 watt and the 10 watt Pro would need to be put together like an erector set and then make sure everything is aligned and squared. And this unit is a little bit larger than I thought it would be. I thought it would pick, fit on this uh, workbench easily, but uh, I did need to locate a piece of MDF. The unit comes with four feet and four foot feet extensions uh, in case you're going to laser engrave something that has a larger height. So I didn't put the extensions on, I just used the standard feet. <coughs> and there's that MDF that I'll be placing this on temporarily until I get a workstation set up for this unit. Uh, there's the air hose. So this unit and the Pro, the one selling feature was that they both had the air assist built in. Whereas with the other units it would be an add-on. And these instructions are Chinese and English and it's kind of broken English with a few really bad photos. Uh, but everything was pretty straightforward. You just had to hook up the air hose to the pump and the power to the main case. It's in essence a sophisticated heat beam which we called a laser. Here is our laser beam and we do just have to run that air hose for the air assist and then the power back to the main control box. And like I said when I put this module on that's how you would change out to a higher wattage module. When I asked in the message groups, a lot of people did suggest that uh, I go with the highest wattage I could, and this is in my budget. I didn't really feel like spending $1,300 on a laser engraver. They did send a few pieces of sample wood. Uh, I actually had some thin pieces of wood in my shop as well. So finding things to engrave is not going to be any issue in my shop. And then they sent these stylus glasses. Take a look at that. Nice. And of course, since it is a class four laser, you never should look directly into the light. But that's pretty much the assembly. Uh, the next step is connecting a computer. Now this is my old laptop that I've had for years and I made the mistake of not turning it on until the day that this laser engraver arrived. So it took forever for this computer to actually turn on. Uh, you can print directly from the uh, mini disc, scan disc. And I had to try to do that because I had a 19% sit there for about an hour and a half. Uh, so after a lot of frustration, simple request. 
And that is to have sharks with frickin' laser beams attached to their heads. The update finally completed. So once it did complete, I just loaded a standard DCF, DXF, uh, whatever their cut files are, and put it on a piece of my scrap that I had to see what it would do. Uh, the cut didn't take very long. I did have to run this sequence twice. Uh, to get it to cut all the way through on all of the pieces. Now, I did create a lot of smoke in my garage. I had my door closed when I was running it the first time and had to open it to allow it to vent. So I'll be sure wherever I do mount this in my garage to ha have it vent to the outside. But the air assist really helps. Something that I'll have to look at down the road to, <laughs> along with a computer, uh, would be an, a honeycomb base. They recommend that if you plan on doing a lot of cutting. But I'm not sure if I'm going to do a lot of cutting. Like I said, I want it. The main reason I got this was for the engraving and personalizing. My thought was I can engrave uh, the bottle openers I'm making or cutting boards and things like that. It'd be nice to add a few personal touches. And this is a diode laser, so there's no. There's nothing to replace, so it's not like CO2 where the CO2 will eventually evaporate or deplete. This is just a diode that runs off of the power from your house. I know this isn't the best angle to see, but here I'll have a shot here of it finished. And you can see that really really did cut very well. A little bit of burning, um, but if I got that honeycomb, that should get rid of that on that one corner. And that's pretty intricate. Pieces are just falling out, uh, and it wasn't a very large uh, cut. So yeah, I mean, I really am impressed with how quickly it was set up, and I was up and running. I look forward to really playing with this and getting a lot of experience on it in the next few weeks. Uh, but until then, if you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And if you like what you see, it would really help me out if you guys would subscribe or like the video. Until next time, thanks for watching.